1976 was a momentous year. It marked 200 years since American independence. To celebrate the occasion, new versions of three denominations were produced. One of those was the half dollar, commonly referred to as the Kennedy half dollar. We're going to explore the 1976 half dollar value. We'll look at the difference between a coin that's worth a few dollars and one that's worth thousands. And we'll investigate some of the error coins that are worth big money. The half dollar struck in 1976 marked 200 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Three commemorative coins were proposed to mark the occasion, a quarter, a half dollar, and a dollar. The proposals came from a special committee that had been set up a decade earlier to prepare for the bicentenary, but the Treasury were at first reluctant to go along with the idea. Previous issues of commemorative coins had not always been successful, and the nadir had been reached with commemorative coins featuring George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington. Distribution problems led to the coins being repeatedly discounted before many finally passed into circulation, and the resulting bad publicity meant the Treasury was wary of a repeat performance. But there was strong political support for the commemorative coins, and in 1972 the Treasury dropped its opposition. A competition was run to find a design for the new coins. Anyone could submit a design, and over 15,000 inquiries were made before the competition deadline. In the end, over 800 designs were submitted, and a judging panel was established to draw up a shortlist. The shortlist featured 12 entries, which were then whittled down to six. The committee put final recommendations to the Treasury Secretary, George Schultz. He chose a design featuring Independence Hall for the reverse of the half dollar. In 1974, the successful designers of the three commemorative coins were invited to the Mint facility in Philadelphia. Here, a ceremonial striking of the first coins took place. Three prototypes of each denomination were preserved and included in special presentation sets for VIPs. The rest were melted down. The first half dollars available to the public were issued in July 1975. Ceremonies to mark the moment were held at Minneapolis, the hometown of the winning designer, Seth Huntington. The sets were produced in very large numbers, intended to give every American the chance to own a commemorative coin, but many did not sell, and in 1982, with silver prices rising, many of the unsold silver coins were melted down. The obverse of the bicentennial half dollar remained largely the same as the coins from the previous year. They still bore the image of John F. Kennedy produced by the Mint's chief engraver at the time of the first Kennedy half dollars, Gilroy Roberts. Above Kennedy's image, the word liberty curves around the upper two-thirds of the coin edge, and the motto, In God We Trust, appears alongside Kennedy's neck. The prize-winning image for the reverse of the 1976 half dollar was the work of Seth Huntington. He was the head artist at a Minneapolis publishing firm called Brown & Bigelow, the design showed Independence Hall in Philadelphia. This historic civic building was the place where America's founding fathers had debated and adopted the Declaration of Independence. Its name was inscribed beneath the image to prevent any confusion. On the left-hand side as you view the coin are the words, 200 years of freedom. On the right is the Latin motto, E Pluribus Unum. This appears on all U.S. coins and means, from the many one, a reference to the creation of the USA from the individual states. Beneath the Latin are the initials SGH for Seth G. Huntington. The country name curves along the top edge of the coin, while the denomination inscribed as half dollar curves along the bottom. The San Francisco Mint facility produced both proof half dollars and the 40% silver business strike coins. The mintage of the latter was 11 million, and the coins were available only in bicentennial mint sets. These contained six denominations, from the cent through to the dollar. It's not surprising, then, that most have survived in excellent condition, having been stored carefully by collectors. Some nevertheless found their way into circulation. If you find one of these, it will be worth $6 or $7. In Mint State, the PCGs values an MS-60 coin at $8, with values rising gradually through the grades. An MS-63 coin is worth around $11, and a gem quality MS-65 around $22. Availability declines at MS-67+, plus, with coins at that grade valued at $65. At MS-68, the value more than doubles to $140, and 
and at MS68 Plus, there's a big jump to $1,400. The finest coins to have so far come to light are graded MS69. The PCGs has certified five of those, and they're each valued at $25,000.